Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel MI Tutorials. In this tutorial, let's deep dive into two of the important DAX functions, which is rank and rank X. See what are the differences between them and look at some of the use cases where we can use the rank function. Now, basically the rank function is used to rank a set of values in a list. So let's get started with this tutorial. We will start by creating a new measure. Let's call this as category rank x is equals to we'll start by defining the rank x function over here so rank x the first argument here is to enter the table name instead of passing in the table name orders directly over here i will use the function called all and then pass in my subcategory column which i have used in this particular matrix table followed by a comma and on the expression over here, this is where we will be calculating based on the value. I have created a measure here called as total sales. I'm going to pass that measure over here, total sales, because we will be ranking based on the sales amount followed by a comma. Value, I'm going to leave that blank. The order here by default rank x function considers it to be descending order and if you want to change the order you can do that or you can explicitly define the order. So let's do that. Let's define the order here and then there's something called as the ties which is either dense or skip. By default the rank x function has dense and so let's define here explicitly again saying that it is going to be dense. I'm going to close the bracket here and confirm to this particular DAX code. And now let's bring in the cat rank X that we created and take a look at the rank that we have generated over here. And let's sort this by total sales. And you will see that we've now generated the rank for all of the subcategories. And if you look at this, we've got this in a series, one, two, three, four, five, all the way till 23. And we are also seeing the subtotal or total over here, which we don't really need to see in this case because it's a rank function and having a subtotal here or total here does not really make sense. So we will have to get rid of the total over here. So we will do that in a moment. But before that, what I will do is I will add category field also to this particular matrix and let me go back to the format tab and bring the category here into the rows and now you see that all of my category rankings are showing here as one and when I look into the subcategories they all have rankings over here and when I look at the another category the ranking gets reset over here and starts again from one. Now let's say that you want to add the ranking to your category as well. You want to have ranking to your categories and when you drill down into your subcategory, you also want to see the ranking here by subcategory. So to do that, what you can do is you can make a change to your DAX over here. So let's go back to our cat rank X category and say if is in scope subcategory, then execute the code that we've created over here. All right, if it is not, then I want this to check if my category is in scope, if is in scope, my category, then it needs to execute this code. I'm going to copy this code over here and let's change the order subcategory here to category. And then I'm going to close the bracket here and confirm. And now let's go back to our matrix and you will see that we've now started to rank the categories as well. One, two, three, four. You see four twice over here because the value for the bakery and sales are same. That's why you see the number four twice over here or the ranking four twice over here, followed by five, six and seven. And now when we get into the subcategories, you will see that we have our ranking intact there as well. Also notice that we now don't have the total anymore. That's because on the second argument that we added, if is in scope, it is checking that if the category is in scope, else it is returning a blank. If I add NA over here and confirm to this tax, you will see that in, in the place of total here, you're seeing the NA over here. So if you want to get rid of the total, I, what I have done is I've used the if is in scope function over here to say that if my category or the subcategory is not in scope, then I want to return a blank value. That's what is happening here. And that's why you don't see the total here when it comes to the rank total. 
And now when you look at the ranking over here for the category, you see that our ranking is 4, 4 followed by 5 over here. And this is what the dense function is doing, right? So dense function basically says that if there is a tie between two of the values, it is going to assign the same ranking to both of them. And then the next ranking is given to the next category. Now, if you look at the ranking for the category over here for the bakery and essentials, both of them have four ranking and the next ranking here is five. Now, since both of these rows have assigned fourth rank, the next value here is assigned as five. Now, let's say if you want to change that and make that as sixth so that we skip the fifth ranking, this is where the skip function comes into play. So I'm going to change this to skip here instead of dense, which is by default. And I'm going to confirm this. And now if I go back, you will see that we have four, four assigned twice over here. Fifth ranking is skip, and then it jumps to sixth automatically. Now, let's say, for example, your requirement is not to show multiple same rankings here. For example, let's say you want to have one, two, three, Fourth ranking, you want to assign it to bakery based on the category name as well because bakery comes in first and then the essentials. You want to assign fourth here and fifth over here. So if you have to use the same rank X function, then it gets really complicated. So this is where the rank function comes in handy. So let's see what we can do with the rank function and how we can create the rank function. I'm going to create a new measure here. I'm going to call this as rank cat is equals to, I'm going to start by defining a rank function over here. The first argument here is to define whether it is going to be dense or skip. So let's go with dense over here. I don't want to skip. And the next argument here is the relation. This is where you will have to define your table. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to say all of my category, close the bracket, comma, and order by and I need to order by sales amount. I'm going to close the bracket here and confirm. And let's bring in the category rank into our set over here. And now when you look at the rank function, you will see that the ranking has been reversed, meaning that this has gone from ascending to descending. So by default, the rank function considers it to be ascending, but the rank X function by default considers the sort value to be descending. So in this case, we will have to explicitly define saying that this needs to be in the descending order. So within the order by function over here, I'm going to define this as descending and confirm. And now you will see that our ranking has been populated. One difference that we see between the rank X and rank here is because we have used dense in the rank function and skip in the rank X function. So let me change this to skip and confirm. And you will see that the values or the ranking values here both are same. And now how can we rank based on multiple columns? which is the category column over here. So to add another column, this is one of the native function of the rank function. It becomes really easy to implement this or if you want to rank the values based on multiple columns, I can simply add in a comma within the order by clause and enter my category field over here followed by a comma and the order that I want to rank this. In this case, I want to order this by ascending. I'm going to confirm this. And now when you look at the rank over here of the category rank field, we've got the fourth rank for bakery and fifth rank for essentials, which is now being ranked based on multiple columns, which is the total sales and category. And now when you drill down into the subcategories, you see that the ranking for the subcategories is not working correctly because we will have to make the change to our rank function just like how we did to our rank X function. So what we will do is we will start by checking if is in scope the subcategory, then it needs to execute this piece of code. I'm going to copy the entire ranking code over here and change this to subcategory change the order here to subcategory followed by a comma. If this is not, then I want my categories function to work. I'm going to confirm this piece of code now and you will see that our ranking within the subcategories have started to work as well. 
Now one more thing to notice here is within our rank and the rank x function we have used the all function. Now what happens that if you have to slice and dice with your data for example let's say you want to identify or you want to just look at some of the categories and look at the ranking of those subcategories for example I have the beverages category here and then within the beverages I want to just analyze the these five six categories over here and now if you see the ranking over here they are all three four five seven and that's not something that I want to look at I only want to see which is my first rank category in this particular scenario so to change that what we have to do is instead of saying all I will have to change this to all selected make that change over here as well make change that to all selected and confirm and now even if you slice and dice your data you will be able to see the ranking for those selected subcategories so as you can see over here cake is ranked as first within beverages and these are the categories that we are looking at and we now know the ranking for those categories only so these were some of the use cases of rank and rank x function that i wanted to help you guys understand so with this, we have come to the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You learned something new today. Please consider subscribing to my channel for more such tutorials.